My name is Dan Smith, and I am going to be your tour guide on this Gilligan's Island three-hour tour. Now, it's only one hour, everybody. Um, and so this is part of our real interview series that we do. And I'm lifting my chair up. I just feel really short for some reason. There we go. Um, so we try to bring you different pieces of information, different topics, um, different tools, tips, tricks, techs, hacks um, each month. And this month, we decided what we wanted to do was bring in three people um, who are, have gone from what in my definition of rookie to rock star. Not that they're rookies anymore. Some have been in the business for a while, right? But compared to a lot of the membership and compared to a lot of real estate agents, myself included, who've been in business selling real estate since the 90s, even, even the 2000s, right? Pre, pre whole uh, subprime meltdown. These guys are relatively new um, for how long they've been in the business and they are in my definition crushing it. And so I wanted to bring them on. They're all very caring and sharing to talk about what they're doing, how they've succeeded, why they think they've succeeded, what's worked, what hasn't worked and all that kind of stuff. So it's just gonna be a real fun flowing conversation that um, I have lots of questions and I can obviously carry the load here, but I'd really like it if our audience would, I, I'm looking right now, looks like I have 41 people in right now watching live. If our audience would jump in with questions as well, that just makes it always a lot more fun for all of us involved. So here we go, let's get into it. Uh, rather than do really lengthy introductions, my introductions are gonna be more question-based. Um, about who they are. And so we'll do them one at a time real quick, but I do want to welcome Ryan, Ruth, and Steven to the big show. Um, let's have uh, ladies first. Ruth, tell yeah. us, uh, if you would, just a little bit about yourself, um, uh, how long you've been in business, uh, where you're currently uh, selling real estate from, like your, your, your brokerage, your firm, um, and what you did before real estate. Those three things, everybody, those are gonna be the questions. Okay, hi, Dan. So I'm Ruth Bruno and I work with Regency Real Estate Brokers. That's where I met Dan. Um, believe it or not, it will almost be three years. I got my license at the end of November, which was a great time because then I just did a lot of studying and kind of kicked off the new year. And what was the third question? Third question was, what did you do before real estate? Okay. I was in corporate um, marketing, market research. So I worked a lot um, East Coast hours, doing a lot of market research and marketing. I think that really helped me because I know a lot about contracts and the technology side of it easily to jump into the Zooms and um, doing more technology and marketing for real estate. That's okay. me. Perfect. Perfect. And Ryan, you are up. Yeah, hi, my name is Ryan Immel. Um, I'm a realtor with the Immel team in Pacific Sotheby's International Realty. We're based down here in Dana Point. Uh, I've been licensed for about six and a half years now, been full time for almost four. And um, before real estate, you know, I was going to, I was in school, going to college and everything uh, is something I knew I was going to get into pretty young. So I got my license coming out of high school and pretty much went straight into it after. Fantastic. All right. And last but not least, Stephen. Hi, I'm Stephen. I'm, I'm with Anvil Real Estate. Uh, I started or was in supply chain before I became a realtor, got my license in May of this year. And um, yeah. Um, so, so everybody knows, I know Ruth from my days at Regency. Um, from years back. I know Ryan because he's done some transactions with other people in the firm that I kind of help run. And that's kind of how we had crossed paths. And then for whatever reason, we find ourselves at the same restaurants on occasion, hanging out. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Steven is actually, I know the most about Steven's business probably because he is in fact, one of our agents. Um, and so, but it, so I, I kind of know what's going on with him a little bit, a lot bit more than I probably know what's going on intricately with, with Ryan and Ruth. Okay, so um, first question is, why did you get into real estate? Like everybody who's watching, we've got 49 people on right now. So super fast, like, like 30 second. I got into real estate because, Ryan, you're up. Uh, I got into real estate because I was born into a real estate family, grew up with my dad, Phil Immel, and always being around it, you know, seeing properties, um, watching how these deals unfold. And that's when it initially piqued my interest and seeing, and then, you know, when it, when I realized that how much we can really help people 
um, achieve their dreams, whether that's buying a dream home, moving, um, starting a family, or changing lifestyles. That's when, that was the moment I probably really got interested into real estate. And so I've been around it, I've seen it, and uh, fell in love with it that through that. All right, Stephen, how about you? Um, well, I got into real estate. I mean, like I said, I just got my license and it was kind of the whole COVID era transition. So um, I felt like I needed a life change. I didn't like the, the nine to five. I know I wanted to own a house. I know if I have friends who are talking about owning houses and kind of making that transition and no one really knew, including myself, how to, how to do that. So I wanted to learn and just be able to help my friends, kind of like Ryan saying, be able to show people, you know, this is how the steps to take, the processes you need to do. And yeah. And Ruth. Hi. So kind of like Ryan, I'm big family. There's nine siblings and half of them are in real estate, but I was a single mom. So real estate wouldn't have worked for me later on uh, earlier in life. I, this is my third career. And I was working so hard in market research and marketing. Things changed in that industry and in corporate world. And the timing was just right. I had friends, even family saying, now's your time to get into real estate. And it, it was just a perfect timing perfect fit. I volunteer a lot. I love helping people. And I just took all that into real estate. So it's been super rewarding. And I just love educating. I really love first time home buyers, believe it or not, because I wish there was somebody some has to. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> they really need help. And I've, I've helped a lot in the last two years and it's super rewarding because I want them to build their wealth and really understand what they're doing. Right. Um, but you know, listings, of course, I love those too, but I just love helping people in general. And it's, it's been truly a blessing. So I'm so, so glad I went all in. Perfect. Um, Ruth, let's keep with you. So let's talk about production just so all of our viewers know what's going on. Um, where are you at in terms of units or volume or both just whatever you kind of track? Um, I know some people do units, some people do volume, some people are super analytical and do everything. Um, so, but I know you, I know you're very heavy unit count at least. Um, so where are you at here coming up on your third year? Where are you, where are you currently sitting as we ra wrap up the year? Um, so this year, let's see, my first year I had a goal for 10. I, I met that. And then I doubled that my second year at like 22. This year I'm about 38 transactions and I have a few more listings coming and a few more buyers. So that's where I'm at. So 38 transactions coming up on month 36 yeah. right now in the business, actually, which is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Um, so for those of you, 51 people, there was 52 a second ago, that guy who just left, that guy who just <laughs> left, now you're about to miss out because I'm telling you, um, unless you were doing 38 whatever transactions in your first three years, there's something to be learned here coming up. Um, all right. And Ryan, how about you? Now, Ryan, I think you, just because of where you work, you're a little bit more volume heavy than unit heavy, probably. Um, just right. it's the nature of the beast. So where, I don't know what you track, but where are you at right now? Yeah. So, so far in 2021, um, we've sold 18 homes for a volume of 100 million. As yeah. a team. That's the, it's one of those times that Dave tells me I can't tell us, but that's that kind of ton of, uh, of production. Good yeah. job. hundred million is no joke. Thank you. Um, awesome. Um, and Steven, I know your numbers, um, right? But so Steven, uh, you're coming up on, you know, you're not quite at six months, but you're coming up on six months of yep. being licensed and closed and pending. Where, where are you at right now? Do you know? Um, closed and pending. I'm in five deals, a uh, little over 7 million. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Five deals, 7 million. I like that uh, average price point as well. Yeah. So that's, that's a good one. <laughs> Um, so five deals, seven million, five and a half months in the business. So there's something to be learned there for, by people as well and how to get some upper dollar. Ryan, there's something to be learned there as well. Okay, so let's talk about the market real quick. Where do you guys think the market is going in 2022? What's your personal crystal ball, like a 30 to 45 second answer? Where do you think the market's going to go? Whoever wants to go first. I'll go first. Um, I think we're going to get more inventory. So I think it's going to stabilize a little bit, but I think the rates are still going to be amazing to help those buyers. And it won't be as crazy as a seller's market. That's just because I think it's going to be great still though. Steven, how about you? 
gosh, I kind of think it's going to continue the trend. <laughs> um, <laughs> only reason why I say that now is because there's still crazy competition out there and come spring, it's just going to be even more again. So, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I know mortgage rates are going to rise up and that might lower the demand a little bit, but still <laughs> there's so many people looking for homes. Yeah. All right. And Ryan. Yeah, I agree with them. Um, I mean, it's <laughs> I agree with them. It's going to get better, stay the same or neutral. That's a good answer right there, my friend. <laughs> uh, um, it's been wild, yeah, it's been a wild year, but until we see more inventory, I mean, all these buyers are going to be competing for the same house. The rates are still great historically. And until there's either a big uptick in inventory or the interest rates, um, everyone's going to be competing. And yeah, it's cooling down a little bit right now coming into the holidays, but that's standard. But um, come back spring, I think it's still going to be a strong year in 2022 and a lot of opportunity there. So, okay. When I wrote this question, I wrote some questions down because otherwise I would just go completely off track. I told you guys that we didn't do a prep call. Everybody, if, you've ever, if you're watching us, I don't do prep calls, so they don't really know what's going to be coming at them. I just think it makes it really organic. Um, but I have to write the questions down. Otherwise, I'm just like squirrel all day long and I can never stay on track. And there's things I want to make sure I ask. And so when I asked, and I see this, uh, Doug had asked a question. We'll get to yours in a second, Doug. Um, but when I wrote this question down, it was prior to me leaving on a vacation. And it was prior to like probably one of the biggest pieces of news that has happened in uh, real estate in the last year or so, um, which was Zillow getting out of the iBuyer market. Um, so when I wrote this, and so uh, I was going to say, what do you think of, so we know how Ruth thinks, um, but, but the question that I had written prior to that happening was, um, what do you think of disruptors um, and like iBuyers and lead portals, like people who are selling the leads, people who are doing iBuying, and there are still other iBuyers out there, right? There's still OfferPad, there's still Redfin now, there's still Open Door. There's still people selling the leads, Zillow, Realtor.com, Homelight, right? So there's lead portals and then there's uh, iBuyers, a little bit disruptive to the normal work your circle of influence, work your farm business models. What do you guys think about those? Do you, do you, do you worry about them? Do you try to, how do you compete against them? It is it just, I don't know, just in general. Uh, Ryan, you're up first. Um, personally, I don't really worry about them. Um, I'm happy that they're out of it now and I kind of, thought that they were setting their, themselves up for failure. And especially when it comes to the consumer, all these people are getting so hyped up on these estimates or other values and stuff that maybe aren't accurate. Um, when it comes to buying leads online or selling leads online, we don't, we don't buy leads or anything like that. Um, and I don't think we will. Um, I know it's worked for a lot of people, but um, especially in our marketplace, I think there's a lot more value that you can uh, propose and show to your clients than these Zillow iBuyers or any other thing like that could possibly do, especially in the luxury market. And I feel like the clients realize that. So you need a true professional. I'm not too worried about them. And uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Ruth, how about you? Yay. That's all that, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm in, a, I'm in an escrow with one of them right now. Um, similar to exactly what Ryan said, um, not worried about them. You know, we're always going to have that in every industry. And if we're just true to ourselves and like our clients really need our value, right? I don't think they bring a lot of value. Uh, I also don't pay for leads. I, I get them organically from connecting and my sphere of influence for sure. But yeah, no, not really worried about them, but glad that the Zillow iBuyer is out. Was, they're very challenging to work with and there's estimates you know, people go to them and it's great that there's that technology to help educate and for them to search online, but 90% of them come back to a professional that's really going to help, you know, help them succeed in getting their real estate goals. Asked, actually, just so you know this, I didn't, statistically 90% did come back. So 90% of the people who asked for an offer on their home, um, then Zillow gave them an offer and 90% of them um, if they did list, not all of them sold. Some of them just wanted a price, right? But if they did decide to sell, so it's a smaller portion of the people who clicked who then decided to sell. But of those people who did decide to sell, 90% of those people went back to a traditional real estate agent um, is the number that I had just recently heard. Um, so those estimates are funny. You guys all know, full disclosure, I'm a big Zillow lover, right? I heart Zillow. Um, but 
Um, oh man, memes have been great that have been out there, right? Rich Barton <laughs> with his head on his hand going, it's estimates. We were guessing. We were wrong. Right. And some of the some of the stuff has just been just classic that's been out there. Steven, you're gonna have a little bit of a different take on this, right? And I know this because and then we got a couple questions. So I'm gonna halt my questions as soon as I get through this round and get some of these other others answered. Steven, you might have a little bit of a different take from this because I, I mean I know where you're driving your business and some some stuff. So let's let's break yours up. How do you feel about the iBuyer potential business first? Let's do that one first. Okay. Um, well, kind of like Ruth and Ryan said, wasn't really concerned about it. And now that the news broke that they weren't doing a great job of the whole eye buying process to begin with, I think it actually kind of puts us in a better position because now people are a little more weary of, you know, do we use somebody who's just kind of making a random guess on our home price? And um, I think that actually helped our cause now that things have changed for the, for the time being. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really worried about them. Was honestly just surprised at how things went. And now it all makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, because I know that you had lost a listing or two opportunity because Zillow's price that they offered was so much significantly exactly. higher than that chance you got. And so now you're like, oh, well, that's why they went there. Now they had to like shut that program down because they were doing yeah. it wrong. <laughs> 100%, exactly. So um, on the flip then, side, though, on the lead portal side, that's been, I think, for you, unlike, you know, the, the your other two here on the panel, I think that's been a big part of your business. So let's talk a little bit about that. It has. Um, and the difference, I think, for my side of the lead portal is all of mine have been referral based instead of purchase leads. So I'm not fronting the money in the beginning to maybe get someone who could or could not do business. Um, I'm getting sent leads that could or could not do business. And then once they actually turn into something, um, I pay them out on the back end. So for me, it's been really successful because it's just up my learning curve significantly. Instead of having to do all the extra legwork, um, which I know is very important. And I'm starting to do that now to get my own side of the business running more. Um, it got me in front of people faster to kind of learn the conversation pieces that happen when you're touring homes, when you're in an escrow, um, you know, all the objections that come up. Like, I think without that, I wouldn't have excelled as quickly as I did in the past few months. Awesome. All right, let's jump into some of the questions that our audience is asking. And this is fantastic because if you guys have never been on some of these with me, it is sort of like oral surgery, getting people to ask questions at times. Um, so this is great. I got people chiming in all over the place. There's a little bit of love coming out from Regency over there. So thank you guys. Um, Doug asked, um, what is your number one source for new listing leads? So if each one of you would just answer that question real briefly, new listing leads, go. Ruth. Um, probably my sphere of influence. I, I've been a connector my whole life. I mean, volunteer, I give back to the city of Irvine in multiple different ways. My kids have been in multiple sports. So I have a great base of people. Um, and, and that's key for all you new agents, getting your database up and really marketing to them and keeping in touch with them. So it's pretty much then referrals and past okay. clients are my Ryan. base. Yeah, very similar to Ruth. Um, it's mostly referrals. You know, that comes from your sphere of influence, being involved in the community and farming too. And it all kind of comes together to create more referrals. And Stephen, I think you've only been on maybe two, three, four listing appointments in the last five months, bringing as new as you are, right? But where have those come from? All, just like Ryan and Ruth said, all sphere of influence for the most part. Um, okay. Maybe one... Uh, one referral base from Zillow, but um, that was more, it was a buyer who needed to sell before they could buy. So um, other than that, yeah, all sphere of influence. All right. And how many hours a week are you typically working, Ryan? Uh, it fluctuates probably. And, but for this year, I'd say 50, sometimes 60. And then, you know, it slows down for a little bit and stuff. But when we're really getting after it, it's, it seems like it's nonstop. So all right. And Steven? Same. Um, like Ryan said, it fluctuates, but I mean, easily 50 hours a week. <laughs> okay. Ruth? I don't even keep track. I, I'm burning the midnight oil right now. I'm very busy. So I work a lot of hours. Yeah. If I had to guess, I just know because Ruth, everyone from I try to talk to you or schedule something. I like, I want to be surprised to, and I sometimes question like your time management. Cause I'm like, I think she's working like 80 hours a week. Right. I'm like, like, she is definitely like, we got to work on efficiencies. So maybe, right. Cause you're like I, grinding. I, I, 
definitely, definitely need to work on that and trying to get that balance. But, you know, in this industry, when it comes, it comes and I want to help so many people. So I'm going to keep taking it. Yeah. I don't have a team, Ryan. So it's just me, you know, um, but I have an amazing team. So it's kind of, you'll, you might get to that, right? Um, so it's a lot of work. I do all my marketing, all that stuff myself, but I have great mentors and teams. And once I get into escrow, I have amazing teams to help me with all that. So I'm, I'm slowly getting there, you know, You're getting there, yeah, but I feel like, yeah, I wouldn't be, if you would have said 80 weeks, I don't even think I would have challenged it. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, Cassie Stone, some realtors, uh, love. And then Evan has asked, do you think that open door is going to follow? I like that clever, Evan. Do you think that open door is going to follow Zillow's way out the door? <laughs> um, so do you guys have any, do you guys, do you guys even follow that kind of news enough to be able to intelligently answer that? Do you think open door is going to close up? Do you think, uh, and, and not do that? What do you think? I don't know uh, for sure, but I, I yeah. think it works for some people, you know? Um, so there is a, maybe a small percentage, but I don't know. Can't say. Any different answer there from the other guys? I don't I'm going to chime in just with my two cents, Evan, because I follow a little bit more closely than most people probably. I don't think open door will fold. Um, I also don't think open door will be is a wave of the future. I think open door and I buyers will probably make up 5% of the listing inventory within the next decade um, because it is right for some people, people who have health issues, people who need to move fast, people who have issues with showing or cleanliness. Um, there's all these different things, right? That I think it is the right move for some people. Um, and Open Door is now a publicly traded company with significant funding behind it. Um, they're not just like, and so was Zillow, but Zillow, it wasn't their main business. It was an experiment. Open Door's built specifically for this. So I don't think they close up, but I also don't think it's the wave of the future. There'll be a small segment of the market who will always utilize them. That's just my two cents. Um, and Terry asks, what does your normal day look like? And what CRM do you use? So um, if you use a CRM, great. If you don't, skip it. But just real quick, what does your normal day look like? Wake up to go to bed in between. I know it's a super long answer. If you all answered it in detail, we'd be here till tomorrow. So what can you give me super fast? Whoever goes first. Um, I'd say we start with the team meeting, You know, catch up every morning what we need to do, start following up with clients, calling them, uh, probably work on some marketing materials, if we have a listing appointment, go on that day, prep for it the day before as well. And um, it, when we have listings, go and show them for most of the time. So, All right. And then right deals. I have, so everything's on my calendar. So I have to check my calendar the night before to see um, what's going on for the next day to prepare. I help the city almost every morning during the week. Um, but I follow up with all my clients. I check with my TC where I'm at right now. I'm in six escrow. So making sure everything's getting done at the uh, right time and communicating back with my clients. And again, preparing, always preparing for next listing appointment, uh, buyer's um, journey appointment. And my CRM, I use Lion Desk and Outlook combo. Um, but I also use MailChimp for uh, sending things out. So hope that helps. So, and Steven, what's your day look like? Um, kind of similar meetings in the morning, depending on the day. Um, usually Tuesdays, Thursdays, we have meetings. If there's no meetings, then I usually just go straight into follow-up, um, just checking in on clients. Uh, afternoons, usually I'm on appointments, um, out and about for the most part. Um, but yeah, if it's not follow-up, then I'm just trying to create some kind of marketing. Um, for CRM, I'm using Copper and MailChimp as well. Um, yeah, that's... Basically. This question wasn't asked and I hadn't thought about it, but it just came to mind. What was your busiest day? Super fast. What was your busiest day that you can remember in real estate? Like I had this many appointments or I worked from this time to this time on appointments. If you have anything like that, you guys might not even be able to come up with it. But if you do know what it was and if you have like a busiest day that stands out to you, like I did this many appointments one day or I, I like did 14 hours one day or just anything, just curious. Just recently, this has been the busiest time. I had seven listings. And then I was working with a bunch of buyers at the same time. So it was crazy. I finally closed on three of them. And now I got three more buyers in escrow. So I'm still juggling that. So the last two weeks have been extremely busy. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, me, Steven. Um, for me, just uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I had a super long day where I started showing homes at 8.30 in the morning, didn't get back till eight at night, still had offers to write, went all over from 
La Jolla to mm -hmm. Tustin to Huntington Beach. So it was like just a crazy all over the place day, no stop, late to everything. <laughs> and was that one was that one client going to all those spots or what was that? Uh five clients in one day <laughs> so wow. it was a mission for sure and they were all awesome and super flexible and happy to work with me but um yeah it was uh a long one for sure you're packing anything. that cooler with you right Steve? yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything stand out to you ryan um yeah i mean those days where you're out showing a client multiple homes and it just goes on for hours and hours and then when they like one you have to go home and write the right. offer and then if that day you know, maybe they're trying to decide on an offer. So you have to get that in ASAP and then you go into multiple counter and you have to just be on the ball and ready to revise, write anything. And that sometimes even goes way in, late into the night if you want to be the first um, to get your best offer in and get it accepted potentially. So. And I'm beginning to think that we're not going to ask any more of Dan's questions just so you guys know, because they're flying in. So we're going to keep going on down this path. Okay. Um, social media platform works best for you to stay in touch with your sphere of influence. That should be like a kind of a one word answer. Instagram, Instagram, and Instagram, Instagram, Instagram for me too. Instagram, Instagram, winner, winner, chicken dinner, Facebook, probably me. Cause I'm older than these guys. So Facebook's huge. Facebook free. Okay. So, but what is that now? All part of the meta universe or the <laughs> metaverse. So yeah. So Facebook, um, and Instagram are still yeah. king, uh, king of the castle, right? For sure. Yeah, I think they thrive for two different target audiences and you got to tap into both of them, so. All right, and then I think Ryan said he tries to farm for leads. Wondering wondering if others do that also and how do they farm? Steven, are you farming right now? Currently not farming, should be trying to figure it out. All right, and you're only in for five months, so yes, and I know that it's a conversation you keep having. Ruth, how about you, farming yet? I know yes. you want to. Are you able to do it with your hectic schedule? I, I still do it um, usually once a month and then I do mailers. So I drop myself uh, every once in a while. I do have a college girl that helps me drop in my little community. Um, but I kind of do three smaller areas at first when I charted, it was too big. I think I talked to you about that a long time ago. So I picked a portion of this community to do it regularly. How about your size, Brian? Who are you farming or how you, how do you farm? Our size of the farm. Um, yeah, you, do, you, do you guys farm like traditional farming? Yeah. I think you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so like, how do you farm? Are you just mailers? Are you like, what do you do? Yeah. So we farm a couple different neighborhoods, um, mostly mailers. If it's a new one that we're just starting, you know, we'll bombard it heavily, Wh whether that's like a mailer every other week or something like that, or you do a lot of things and then maybe you go door knock that as well. You just, you got to get familiarized in the neighborhood, be involved with the community. Um, and then, you know, after let's say two months or something, you can maybe go back to once a month or whatever it is, but you change it up. You do market updates, you do whatever it is that will grab people's attention and what they're interested in knowing. Same kind of question has come up. What type of marketing do you guys do as well? So what are the type other than mailing to the farm? What other marketing do you guys have going on? If any of you have anything, let me know. Yeah, so social media um, is key, and I do I do paid advertising on um, Facebook and Instagram marketing, and I do mailers. I do um, so in my database. I do a monthly, almost monthly, sometimes a little bit longer, because I don't like to hit people a lot. Um, just kind of what's going on. I like to give people activities going on in the area, so it's not always just real estate related. Um, resources. I do that at the beginning of the year, every year, you know, I'm your resource. You need a handyman, you need a, a electrician, you need a hairdresser, babysitter, you know, that type of thing. Just always trying to be helpful. So all different types of marketing. Ryan, how about you guys? What else? Yeah. Um, we're very heavy on the social media too. I mean, it's so relatively cheap compared to some of these other methods and you can get into in front of so many eyes. Um, so we'll do a lot of videos. We'll do like lifestyle videos too. Um, things to just sell Dana Point or the areas around it. And um, yeah, I don't, we spend a lot of time on that with the Instagram and Facebook advertising as well. So I feel like, and I'm going to talk just from a little bit of knowledge right now. And I, Steven, I just don't feel like you're doing like any other marketing right now. I feel like you're just like so lead heavy. You're like four or five appointments a day, just running the lead world, right? Yeah. Right. Currently, I mean, you try to like get some extra posts up, but you're, yeah. Much. Ryan and Ruth, you guys do video a little bit heavier. 
I feel than the, the, like the normal agent does. Um, Ryan, I don't even know if you're still doing it or not because I've been a little busy myself, but you guys used to do kind of a green screen um, reporting state of the market, just different things going on like in a studio that you had in your office. Steven, yeah. you're sitting in a studio. <laughs> I know right now I can see the green screen, the green walls behind you. And then Ruth, I know that you might not do a lot of produced stuff, but you just do a lot of on the fly, live selfie stuff on video, right? Yeah. How do you guys think that has helped your business? Um, helped with the with their with your clients and helped you attract. You guys notice that video is different than than others. For sure. I, I think so. I think. It, go ahead, Ryan. Oh no. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I think you know, especially when the pandemic hit and everything, everything kind of came to a halt, and we're like, okay, we need to start generating all these new sales. How are we going to get in front of people in this noisy world? So we set up a little green screen st uh, studio in our house. We started doing videos. Uh, informational, educational, entertaining, whatever it is, things that are really applicable to these people. And um, we just started doing that on social media. It really stuck with our followers and people we already knew. And they would send those out to uh, family, friends and everything. And it was, you know, it shocked us how effective it was. It led to a $3.1 million listing that turned into another listing. You know, you leverage that in the neighborhood once you get that listing. And then you just keep going down the line. People see it. So it has a real effect. Um, I think there's a lot of power behind it. It can be tricky to start, but the key is just to start and you'll figure it out as you go. So, yeah. And I, I like to do even um, like when we have open houses back again, I like to do little short videos send to those clients that I met instead of a text, you know, so they can see And our team, you know, our mentor, we, we do a transactional video. So when we're in the transactions, I kind of send a small little video on what the next steps are because people don't always remember what you say. You know, we remember 7% of what we hear. So these help them remind them what's going to be happening now that we got our offer accepted. So throughout the process, I have those all set up, uh, the transactional videos, and then always the follow-up after open houses and connecting with people. I just think it's more personable. Um, so I do do a lot of more of my just little selfies, but we just made a studio in the office. So I'll be hopefully using that more. I saw that. Um, all right. And Steven, I just know you're not currently doing a lot of videos. Agreed? Well, uh, not a lot, but um, what I have done is since I'm out on appointments, if I do come across a house where I'm like, oh, this is perfect for someone I'm not with right now, I'll do a quick little tour or highlight of the of a room where I think, oh, this is something there. And that's definitely got people to come back out of the woodwork and say like, oh, wow, that's a cool house. Maybe we do want to go see it. So that's, that's, that's interesting. That's really direct marketing. Like, yeah, it's not it, like will just be, like, it will be specific to people. And I'll just very specific email, pieces out to people on radio. Text yeah. And just say, hey, I saw this home today and it looks great for you. Let me know if you want a tour. Works. Okay. okay. Works like a charm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two other questions for about new agents. Let me find it here. Um, new agent, new agent, new agent. I feel like there's another new agent one. Hmm. I don't see it. So, oh, as a new agent, is it, I'm going to, it's a two pronged question. As a new agent, is it good to start by paying for leads? As a new agent, somebody else's question. What is the best way to find leads if we can't get referrals? So it's both about as new agents, getting leads, should I buy them? How do I get them? And a little bit of a struggle with if I'm not able to get referrals. Okay, go. So um, the way I started, I'm very frugal. You know, I didn't have a lot of money. So Luckily, when I started, we had open houses and open houses are back. So you really want to try to do as many open houses for people on your team and really connect with those buyers. I would make a little cheat sheet as soon as they left, either on my phone, I would record everything I talked to them about. So I would remember and your follow up after the open houses is huge. I never bought any leads. I really felt that it would be better to go to people that I know and try to have lunch with them or meet them and market to them more, just showing my value. So then they knew they wanted to refer to me, just really work in the people you know, because leads, they're hit and miss. You, you know, you can work with them a lot and then nothing happens. So going with your warm people that love you, trust you, I think that's the main goal there. I hope that okay. helps. How about you? How about you, Ryan? Um, I agree with Ruth. We've never paid for leads and, um, 
I think that the money could be potentially spent spent better on building your own brand and kind of the, your marketing pieces and things like that. Um, I still think the best way to get leads is meeting pe uh, people belly to belly, whether that's just going out networking, being involved in your community yeah. and, um, you know, just doing open houses too. That's a huge one. When I was brand new, I would host other agents, open houses, even if I didn't have a listing That is the quickest way to just meet people and have um, serious buyers that you could work with. So that's where I would start. Um, Steven, for you, new, getting leads. And yeah, you're you're I mean, interesting too, because you came from San Diego. So your circle of influence, your, your, your sphere in Orange County was zero, non-existent. Yeah. Right? So when I did first get my license, um, open houses, just like everybody's saying, um, luckily, even though I represent as myself on Anvil, we work as a team. Um, we all work together and I would host, you know, fellow team members open house. Um, even they kind of trained me on how to do open houses. So just like Ruth is saying, follow up is super important, you know, having conversations with people. Um, and yeah, I mean, besides, like I said, we had the Zillow referrals. I mean, it's just kind of working with people you like, um, having those conversations, being in front of them. That's, that's the way to do it. All right. Somebody asked, what are the one or two things that you attribute to being instrumental to your success, to getting to the level of production that you've gotten so quickly relative to how long you've been in the business? If you did one or two things that was like, this is, this is it. This is like, this is the aha. What would you share? That was from anonymous attendee. If you're a new agent, um, I definitely think you need a mentor to help you set up a road, a pathway to success. Um, Ed and Angie have been tremendous and my whole team. I always think of it this way. Like I play sports. I always wanted to play with the people who are better than me because it made me better. Surround yourself with successful agents, learn, listen, take them to coffee, ask them tips, really get involved, work really hard and just believe in yourself. I don't know. Hope that helps. Cool. How about you, Ryan or Steven? Yeah, I, um, I agree. I think it's super important, especially if you're joining a team, um, you know, join a team with a strong leader that you can learn from that will fast track your education compared to trying to do it all on your own. And uh, you could really divide and conquer then. Um, it, it's crucial, really. And I think video honestly has played a big role. You got you got to stand out. Um, with all these other agents and really bring the value to the table by doing so. So, cool. yeah. Steven. Same thing, like they said, coaching. Uh, I mean, thanks to Dan and the team at Anvil here. Again, like the, the camaraderie is great. I learned a ton. Um, everyone's willing to share, you know, tips and how they do things, uh, just having that path. And then I think the other thing too, I learned fairly recently is you know, you always got to keep learning. Um, like you're never going to have the same appointment every time. It's always going to be different questions. Um, every situation is unique. So just kind of understand that and try and learn the situation you're in instead of, um, I say control the situation because you never really know where it's going to go. Just like Ruth said, you could show people a bunch of homes and it doesn't turn into anything, but I feel like if you're learning along the way, it eventually does turn into something, so. All right, I'm gonna jump from the Q&A screen back over to the chat screen. I'm telling you guys, these guys are flying in here. Hey, as newer agents, what would you tell dinosaur agents um, who have been around a long time? A certain said dinosaur, I guess, is asking that question. So as a new agent, what advice would you give to a dinosaur agent that has been around for a long time? Okay, to give one thing. Don't okay. be afraid. I'd probably do technology. this differently. Don't do what? Don't be afraid of technology. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, you could really utilize technology and leverage it to take your business to the next level. Um, and I know I've said this, but video, it it's a strong thing, so. And just try to have fun with it, you know? It, yeah. When you make mistakes, it actually makes you look more human. Yeah, you look authentic and people yeah. connect with that. How about you, Steven? Um, I mean, for me, I, I, I don't know if this is helping for a dinosaur or not, but have a plan, 
<laughs> um, if you're not making a plan and like creating steps and goals to what you're working towards, you're just kind of like working aimlessly almost. So um, if you don't have a plan, make one. That's good. And I think new people are better at starting plans, by the way. I'll throw that in there real quick. First, it's interesting. All three of you are super successful and you all came in on teams. You didn't try to come in as an independent agent and figure it out necessarily, right? You came in with a support system, but you also came in with plans. I would say it'd be very, very, very certain. Um, and I think the dinosaurs, for those who, who are watching or have asked, I think the dinosaurs have been doing it for so long. Another year is just another year, right? And another deal is just another deal. And another spring is just another spring. And another listing, spring listing season is another spring listing season. And so you kind of just get into that rut of like, I've been doing it for so long. I'm just going to keep doing me and keep doing what I've been doing, right? But, and the planning probably starts to go away just a bit because it becomes so routine and because they've done it for so long. So I think continuing to constantly be taking and breaking and reshaping and, and making plans and changing plans and tweaking plans, I think is really good advice. Um, and I think you three have pretty good plans. And I'd say some other dinosaurs just kind of float because they've been doing it for so long. Um, let me see. Ideally, this is an interesting one. I think this would be super fast. Ideally, would you prefer to be salaried employees or independent contractors? What do you feel about the exemption for real estate agents? So you guys want to stay uh, 1099, do what I want when I want, get no benefits and be my own thing? Or do you want to fall under some sort of more, I get paid for the work that I put in um, and be an, an employee model? The first anybody, going, anybody going with the employee model here? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Just seems like a, a ceiling on your potential and earnings. Yeah. If we're going to work this hard, we want to have, you know, work for ourselves and control it that way. Right. Cause it, I've been in corporate world, you know, I don't know. And you can only get so high and it's out of your control. I think this way we have, if we're going to work this hard, we have, you know, our destiny is I'm not kind of in our hands in a way. Um, somebody asked, do you have an assistant to help you with marketing? Do you use VAs, virtual assistants? I mean, um, do you have an assistant at all? How did you find the assistant? I'm going to have you skip what is the average pay rate. They asked that, but I think that's kind of a personal question to throw out here on a Facebook Live um, if you have assistance. Um, so do you have an assistant, real or virtual, full-time, part-time, or none at all? Go, Stephen. Um, as far as marketing and stuff goes, not really. Uh, we do have some tools at Anvil where they help with the marketing, but it's kind of on me to make sure everything happens. Um, we do, I do use a transaction coordinator though, as far as escrow is concerned to kind of make sure all the documents happen at the right time, things are in place. Um, cause without her, I would definitely be behind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ruth. Kind of the same. Um, not yet. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to get an assistant in there. Um, tried to have my kids do it for me, you know, my marketing, but that didn't work out. So I do all that myself, but like Steven, I have a really great team. My transaction coordinators are amazing and saved me, but I also have a, a team of vendors that really help me throughout my escrows. I, I share my reports with them. So I don't have to always have them go to the house, you know, the home inspection reports. So I have a great team for that, but now everything else is just kind of me, but I have a team of uh, people that I collaborate with, like Amy and Veronica, we get together like towards the end of the year and plan out our year. And they have been really resourceful for me and we've just connected great. So if you can find people like that, that you can plan your year, really get yourself organized. Um, I think that will really help. And when we get- And you're, you're at the production level, just real quick, Ruth, that you probably do need at least a part-time $20 an hour, $25 an hour person to take some of that off of your plate because your time is more valuable now. If you can free up 20 hours a week, um, How do I find what a good more one? can you create? Um, yeah, that's, that's the, that is the hard part. They ask that question too, where do you find them? It is hard to find good assistants. Yeah. Very oh. difficult to find. And I haven't been trying to find assistants during this now that we got this whole employment crisis thing going on, to be honest. Um, but it, it was difficult before the employment crisis <laughs> thing. So, um, But you're at the point that you probably need to start exploring that. And then Ryan, how about you? Do you guys utilize anybody, any VAs, any assistants on site? No, we don't have um, any assistant right now. I think long-term it is important to get, you know, and start delegating some work out so you can scale upwards. But right now we have a team of three. It works really well. We do have a TC, which we are so thankful for. I mean, that's a huge support pillar in our business. Um, but when it comes to marketing or things, we're really creating 
initiating and everything, but we do outsource that to another company to create and send us. So cool. I will say everybody who's watching, uh, we talked about this right before we came on live <clears throat> that we might not get out through all the questions. Hey, we're obviously not getting through all the questions. Um, and so they said, Hey, maybe it'll be in an article that we put in the next uh, newsletter, not newsletter, like another little, what do you call that thing? I'm totally mind blanking magazine that Maggie. comes out for mm -hmm. Ocar, right? And they do a story on this and maybe some of the questions that we didn't get to answer here, we would send out to our guests and they can type up the answer to be part of the story or part of that magazine. So I think that's what we're going to be doing. So if everybody wants to look at the magazine, they will be coming out. I think one just like literally came out this week. I want to say I saw it in my mailbox, maybe even yesterday um, that, you know, in the next issue, maybe we'll have some more questions that we didn't quite get to in this because the audience has been awesome in asking questions. So I'll get a few things that maybe that I was going to ask that didn't get asked by somebody out there and they'll be in the next magazine for you. Okay. Steven, uh, Jenny wants to know when you say Zillow referrals, are you talking about paid leads? No. Um, we have a Zillow Flex account. Um, what that basically is, is um, similar to the Premier Agent, we're basically in the same circle where the person clicks the Connect to Agent button on Zillow and someone gets a phone call. Um, that's it. They call me, I answer the phones, try and set an appointment, uh, go show them houses, and then just at the end of the process, if we do close them, I pay a referral. So you don't pay upfront? a thousand or two thousand a lead or a month you pay at the tail end only on deals that are successful exactly got it and then lily asked oh this one's interesting cold calling door knocking or neither which works better or are none really working um so are any of you cold calling first question we just bang that one out when you say cold calling like people you know or just cold Oh yeah, no, I don't do cold calling, but I do door knocking. I like door knocking. So you you won't call up. You won't just be like 949-514-0001-0002-000. We won't do that kind of cold calling, but you will just be like a street and you'll go knock on all the houses that are on that street. Well, the reason I knock at those is I have a listing coming or I just sold. So then I want to get to know the neighbors or it's in my farm. Okay, so you'll knock a little bit more targeted than pure cold. It's cold, but it's a targeted approach. Yes. To why you chose that street. Exactly. All right. Cool. Ryan? Uh, we don't cold call, really. Um, I know it works for a lot of people, too. But I believe in door knocking over cold calling. It's a lot more easier to, you know, connect with someone, see their reaction, see if they're interested or not, rather than just dialing them up, especially with all how many uh, spam calls we get nowadays. A lot of people just ignore them in the first place or don't want to talk. But I think door knocking is better. Who are you knocking? Targeted or just picking streets in Dana or what do you do? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll target streets in Dana. You know, we have like one massive farm. So we'll just go knock out basically a street at a time. Okay. And Steven, doing cold calling or door knocking? Yeah, not really much of either. Not really much success with either. Haven't um, targeted any specific streets or anything like that. Haven't really um, done the random phone number dials. So can't say for, for either, unfortunately. All right. And I got all those answered. BB has asked, how did you find a team to join except for Ryan? She said, Ryan doesn't, Ryan didn't, you, you don't get to choose your team. Um, so uh, you kind of formed a team though, right? You brought, you, you kind of, you, you, your dad was ready to start stepping out maybe a little bit and you taking the range, you brought in Andrew. Yep. Uh, right. So you kind of helped form a team, but your team was a little bit more organic and just, you kind of are, are taking over the family business and making some pretty fundamental changes to it as you go right. through compared to how Phil used to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yours was a little bit more organically based. So Ruth and Steven, how did you guys find a team to join? So that was, that was huge for me. So my background was in market research and marketing. So when I, finally got my license. I interviewed with like 10 different brokerages and you're just a number. Uh, you know, the majority are just a number. They'll take anyone. Um, so I was through my sister who's an escrow. She referred me to somebody from Thousand Oaks that introduced me to Regency. I didn't understand how Regency worked at first. I thought it was just a regular brokerage, but what I love about Regency was they're more family oriented. They only hire people who are dedicated to the industry. So that was key. And then I ended up meeting Ed and Angie and I liked how um, they were retired. 
so to speak, <laughs> um, where they're not selling and they were there more valuable for me to talk to if I needed. And then the team itself that I'm on, if Ed or Angie aren't available, then I can reach out to anybody on my team. You know, my sister Terry has been in the industry forever also. Um, so just really researching, talking to a lot of people and finding the right fit for you, if that helps. Right. Steven, how about you? Um, kind of similar to Ruth. I mean, when I was almost getting my license or getting my license, I talked with a few other teams. Um, like I said, I'm from, from San Diego and I'm up here representing in Orange County, um, which is where Anvil's based in Laguna Hills. And I chose them just because of the culture and the success. I mean, they, everyone works together, even though we kind of all are individual agents. Um, we don't really have teams on our own per se, but we do work as a team um, and just the culture, the, the family orient of behind everything. Like, I feel like I'm a part of something, even though I'm working on my own, which is huge. It's huge. Okay. I agree. Yeah. It makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. And you guys, are you, am I right or wrong? I don't actually know your team size um, right now, Ryan, but is it the three of you or is there more than that? Yeah. It's just the three of us. Okay. So it's you, Phil and Andrew. Okay. Um, all right. So sweet. Ooh, check that out. We got through a bunch of questions, but now I have to be very strategic with my next one because we have eight minutes left. So let me look at my list real quick. I'm probably actually going to just go down to the bottom of my list um, because I'm, it's probably my wrap up questions. What are, what do each one of you plan on doing differently next year? And I asked that because 2019 was maybe normal and some of you weren't even, maybe you're brand new and some of you weren't even in real estate. And then 2020 was a, you know, what show, um, right. With COVID and then 2021, we've been trying to figure out how to re-navigate and what the new rules are and getting, we've actually almost gotten, gotten used to this ridiculous market that we're in somehow. Right. So 2022, we don't know what's going to shape out, but what are you each of you going to try to focus on and do a little bit differently in 22 that maybe you, then you did in 21. If you guys can, and I don't know, whoever thinks they have the answer first, just go ahead and chime on in. I, I want to try to connect more like coffee dates or lunch dates with um, people. I, that was my goal for this year. And thank God I've been so busy. So I haven't done as much of that as I wanted to. Um, I, I listen to podcasts, Brian Buffini all the time and just personal notes. That's one of my goals to do. I don't do that many of those because I run out of time, but I think those are kind of my little bit differences, but it's been a great year for me. I'm going to kind of keep my same, you know, I meet with Ed and we, we plan our path to success for the year. I do my pop buys. Um, I'm always touching people. Like when COVID happened, I gave tea, you know, tea is like a hug in a mug. And so I dropped that by people's houses. So just that personal touch uh, is, is my main goal. All right. What about you two guys? Farming for me. Um, <laughs> something I haven't started yet and I'm going to really hit hard in 2022. I'm kind of working on materials and stuff to be prepared and a little bit ahead of it. So I'm not always reacting, but that's my biggest change for sure. Farming. All right. Ryan? Mm, probably organization when it comes to like something like a CRM. You know, I've never had a great one or set up well. So um, it's crucial and everyone says it is. So I really need to put in the time to start that up and organize it and help me follow up with leads. Yeah. We, we, we know that you guys weren't using a CRM. Like I knew that, right. So that CRM question came out and I was like, well, Ryan's not going to answer it. Um, <laughs> uh, but you can say it's, it's just amazing to me, the scope and volume of business that you guys are able to do and accomplish without one. It almost makes me like, like, oh my gosh, what if, Right? right. What if they had one? Uh, <laughs> I want to find out. So they're going to be hiring that. more. They're going to need more team members. <laughs> uh, a couple of people said, this has been super helpful. You're awesome. How do the panelists make use of business cards? That's a good. If you guys have any other last minute questions, fly them in here. Um, so what do you guys, do you guys have like super, super awesome, cool gold plated business cards? Do you have like metal American Express platinum business cards, uh, like titanium. Do you not have business cards? Do you digital cards? Like anything special business cards when you leave them, how are you using them? 
believe it or not, I ordered a lot and then we didn't use any. So I know why real estate agents have their old picture on their card for a long time now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch from my first picture. So, you know, I drop them in those free lunch things. No, um, I, I ordered a nice one that's kind of soft. And believe it or not, I won a lot at the broker previews with my nice soft cards. <laughs> But I, I use the touch. savvy card too, you know, the digital one. I like that one because it shows your listing, your contact and stuff like that. So it's give or take. And I feel like savvy card's free if you're an OCR member. Is that right? Or is there a small fee? I think I feel like it was free. free. It is free. So savvy card is free if you're an OCAR member. It's like utilize your dues, people. And savvy card's pretty cool because now you have a digital one. It shows your listings, your contact information, your website, other social profiles. And they right? can search properties from it too. Yeah. And, the, and any ID exit. Okay, cool. Um, how about you, Stephen? Any any super special business card stuff? No, <laughs> I hardly <laughs> use them. I mean, I share them at open houses if agents ask for them, but for the most part, just special requests. <laughs> all right, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, we do all the standard business cards, but this is probably our most beloved one. It's a Immel Team pen. I don't know if you can see that, and yep. you know, got a light stylus and pen so people love these they use them all the time and we'll just hand them out like candy and <laughs> people there you love go. Them. and it's got it's better than a business card and... that gets right. tossed right send me that pocket, one ryan i want to yeah. <laughs> i like well, it very cool all right so i think i'm checking real quick i feel like we got through all the questions um we are at 57 so we're just about out of time um, you guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for being so open. Thank you for being so sharing. Um, thank you for giving everybody some great information. For those of you who are still on and haven't logged off yet, next month I'm going to be interviewing uh, the 2022 Orange County Realtors president, which is uh, Adam Riddell. Hope I said his name right. Um, and so that's going to be the December interview is going to be with Adam. So make sure you tune in for that and see what kind of stuff he has planned for you as your association president in 2022 and what he's going to be doing. Check the education schedule for when it is. Um, but it's going to be on a Wednesday. It's going to be at 10 a.m. It's going to be in December. Uh, so tune in for that one. And then if you have any questions, if you're watching this and you wanted to reach out to anybody, Ruth, how do they get a hold of you? My cell phone, 949-500-2661. I think text is best for me. Um, and, and Ruth Bruno Real Estate, you can find me out there anywhere else too. Ryan, how about you? Yeah, my um, on all social media, I'm Ryan Immel, or you could follow our, our page, uh, Immel Team, or my phone number is 949 -500 Hey, you have a 5002. I know. Yeah, I heard which really that. messes with me by the way when I'm texting you guys, <laughs> if I'm not paying attention. Yeah. And Steven, how about you? Um, Steven Mazurk Realtor is pretty much my handle everywhere, uh, even my website. And then my phone number is 949 339 7677. So if you guys have any questions, you want to follow up with them, ask anything else, please be respectful of their time. If they don't get back to you, don't be a complainer. They don't get back to you right away because they're obviously very busy individuals. Um, but if you want to reach out to them or if you want to reach out to me to be a conduit, uh, always you can find me at by Dan Smith, B-Y-D-A-N-S-M-I-T-H. I'm pretty much every channel out there, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, website, bydansmith.com. Feel free to reach out, DM me, PM me, ping me, ding me, whatever. Um, I'm pretty good at responding to everybody and I will get back to you and answer your questions as well if you have any. Um, Orange County Realtors, thank you again for continuing to provide great content for your membership and putting this thing on. You three, again, one last time, applause. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time today. Um, and yeah. Okar, I think you can take us out. Thank you. <laughs>